everybody. All right, I have a thousand announcements, so if I get 999 correct, you can yell at me about the one I've missed. And I'm still right at 730. All right. All right, good morning. We'd like to uh, welcome you for uh, our 11 o'clock worship service. It's great to see so many people here uh, today. Hope you've had a great week. Um, again, uh, several announcements as we get started. Um, church work day this upcoming Saturday starting at 8 o'clock. We've got several projects that need to be done around the church. We are excited to be getting uh, set for our construction. Hopefully you're going to be seeing some new dirt behind the church in the next few weeks, but in order to do that, we've got a couple of things that need to be done behind the church. We've got some stuff that needs to be done um, in front of the church. So if you're free, Saturday, 8 o'clock, please come on out. Lunch will be provided um, for that. Um, next Sunday, partnership class. If you are here and you are interested in becoming a partner at the church, next Sunday is a good time to get that process started. We're going to have a luncheon following the 11 o'clock worship service. If you can't make the lunch, that's okay. You're just going to miss a free meal. But more importantly, you're going to want to be here April 21st, April 28th, and May the 5th, starting at 930 for the partnership classes. There is a QR code um, in the bulletin today. If you're interested in uh, especially participating in lunch next week, please uh, scan the QR code and let us know that you're going to be here so we make sure that we've got enough food for everyone. Uh, we would like to thank the uh, social committee and everyone who worked, uh, especially Tim and Robin, uh, who were here on Saturday and early on Sunday morning for the uh, great breakfast we had last Saturday morning, it, or Sunday morning, rather, for Easter. It was a great turnout for breakfast in both of our services, so thanks to everyone that uh, came out. If you are headed to Pennsylvania and you're going to Lancaster a week from Tuesday, you're asked to be here at 7.30 in the morning. That's when uh, the vans will be departing and then they will return on Wednesday evening. Uh, we had our first Upwards official weekend yesterday for soccer, so congratulations on that. Please be in prayer for them as they uh, witness and outreach to the community over the uh, next several Saturdays uh, each morning at 9 o'clock. And also be in prayer for everyone, not only the volunteers, but the uh, students who are going to be participating in the uh, Good News Club. That starts at Elmont Elementary this Wednesday afternoon. We'll be getting started right after 2.30 until about 4.15 or so. So please be in prayer leading up to that time and specifically during that time um, as well. Um, if you are free, and we hope you are, please come out this evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a prayer service, and we're also going to be hearing from uh, Troy and Jamie Perrier, who were um, just north of Pennsylvania for several days this week um, in a mission project, and you're going to want to hear about that and just uh, some of the stories they're bringing back. Um, just a lot of good news, I think they would agree, uh, to share. So again, that'll be um, between 5 and 6.30 uh, this evening here at the church. There's also a QR code um, in the bulletin this morning for our Cinco de Mayo. It's a family uh, get-together as we get ready for VBS uh, free taco lunch that's going to be May the 5th here at church after the 11 o'clock worship service so hopefully I hit on everything uh, there's also still information in the bulletin if you didn't grab one about Operation Christmas Child and a men's equipped training night that is coming up for two weeks starting um, a week from Tuesday but we'll get our service started with a word of prayer if you'd bow your heads Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful morning you've given us. Just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and worship you, Lord. We uh, just ask that you be with uh, Pastor Bill as he brings our message this morning. Uh, just uh, lay on his heart the uh, the message that we that we need to hear. We will hear, Lord. We just ask that you be with each, with, with each and every one of us uh, in the next hour. Uh, just open our hearts, open our minds uh, to the music and the words we're about to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with us. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus lives. Oh, 
His mercy is more. 
just do every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, do every morn. Our sins, they are Bibles up to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 9 with me. That would be great. 
And so while you're doing that, just a, a couple of things. One, um, I'm very excited to be back with each and every one of you this morning. So um, our family uh, had the opportunity to go out of town last week on spring break. And that's the last time Jade will let me plan a vacation because I planned it during Easter. Um, and so, you know, la lapse of judgment on my part. But, uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, we, uh, we had a great time. But, 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 you know, it just reminds me, we were in a place where we really couldn't go to church on Sunday. Um, how much I miss that. How much I miss worshiping with, with you guys. How much, as brothers and sisters, that's together, singing and worshiping the Lord and studying together and opening God's word together, how important it is. Um, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm filled to be back with you this morning. I'm so excited. And so uh, chapter nine of second Corinthians, I'm going to read verse six. You can stay seated for this part. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and if God is able to make all grace abound to you, so having all suffi sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. And so, why did I read that? Ever since COVID happened, COVID was kind of wonky in churches around the, uh, around the world, really. Um, one of the things that I've been missing and maybe you've been missing is we have an offering box in the back and it's great. Um, and this church at, at Gwalfme is so generous um, to the Lord. Um, I think it's, it's taught correctly around here. Um, and the saints, which is you guys, um, you honor the Lord with your tithes, with your offerings. But what we failed to do and what we failed to reincorporate is really having a time of worship of this inside the order of service, okay? Uh, we haven't done it since like 2020, early 2020. And so starting next Sunday, we're gonna start passing the plate again. Um, I'm super excited about it. I'm like beyond excited about it, actually. Um, I really am. I've been pressing for this for a while now um, because it's important. It's important that we practically, what does it mean, right? Instead of putting your check or whatever in the box in the back, you're going to put it in the plate when it comes by you, right? If it's, you didn't get paid this week and you don't feel like you get the Lord, it's the same as normal. But spiritually, um, in, in the sense of worship, we're going to set aside a period of time inside our service to thank the Lord, to honor the Lord for what he's blessed us with. Um, and that's going to be like super cool. I'm super excited. We just wanted to give you all a, a week heads up before you saw a plate like swing across your lap uh, starting next week. And so God loves a cheerful giver. Guelph me has been very honoring inside the Lord. We're going to start honoring him inside the service um, when we do that. And so next Sunday, just uh, kind of be on the lookout for that. So kind of flipping over, flip back to Psalms with me to Psalm 26. And now we are going to stand as we honor the Lord with the reading of his, uh, of his psalm. So this is a psalm of David. And man, as I was reading this, kind of preparing to be able to read it for you, I was like, geez, if only I would say this in my own life and, you know, incorporate this as we read this into your life, because um, it's, it's powerful if we can stand before the Lord and speak these words. And hopefully we can, right? So verse 1 right there. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, 
For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit down with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling of all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory, glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, and whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me, be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground, and the great assembly I will bless the Lord. And so one thing before we pray, right there it says, Verse 8, O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house. He said, David, I love being here. I love being with my fellow brothers and sisters. I love that. I live for that, and that's what fills my soul is being in your house, Lord, and being around you. So Pastor Mike did it a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to make the same request to you as, as a personal favor to me, if you can. 5 o'clock tonight, Sunday night service. Um, it's going to be powerful. It's a time where we can gather together and we can set aside time for prayer. Please come for that. Um, we had our youth pastor and his wife go as missionaries to Pennsylvania. We want to hear about that and we want to support them. Five o'clock, please, if you're able to, give it a couple of weeks. And, and you know, if it doesn't mean anything to you a couple of weeks from now, then stop coming. But I, I think it's going to fill you. Um, 11 o'clock will, and 5 o'clock will back it up. So if you're able to, please come back. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for just the, the institution of your church and just being able to come together as brothers, as sisters in Christ, being able to set aside time to worship you in song, in study, in praise, in prayer. Lord, we love you. We love being with you. More importantly, we love that you love being with us. And so, Father, just as we continue on in this service and your time, I pray for Pastor Bill that the message that he brings this morning will, will honor you, will glorify you. And, Lord, it will because the words that are coming out of his mouth, Lord, will be your words. So, Father, just let our hearts be open as we continue on in the rest of this service. And I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, I don't think I have to preach this morning. I think Denny already took care of that for me. Go ahead, Dennis. All right. Good morning. Please, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 12. It's funny when someone says, Pastor Bill, because my family's sitting in the back. And they know the real me. And when you hear Pastor Bill, that sounds a little, little, little different. But you know God is good. Amen. All the time he's good. So to honor the Lord, please stand with me for the reading of God's word. And we'll be beginning chapter 16, verse 1. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to test him. They asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You will know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And that they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus said, Aware of this, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? 
Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets we gathered? Or the seven loaves for the, for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood, and he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to be in your house, to just take time to turn to you, Father, to worship you. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon every person here, and I pray that your spirit is drawing someone here near to you. Father, we thank you for who you are, and we love you for all you've done for us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So Pastor Mike first asked me to, he said, hey man, it's your turn. Can you uh, preach on 16, 1 through 12? I'm like, yeah, sure, I got you, no problem. When you first read this, you're like, okay, fat Sadducees, Pharisees, and bread, and what am I going to get out of this? What is going on here? Well, I'm going to give you guys a short version because once I started digging into this, my goodness, this is some rich, deep scripture here. I mean, we could preach on that. If we wanted to, we could probably get sermons for the next year out of these 12 verses. There is so much here. I'm only skimming the surface. So I always encourage you to read into God's word more, to dig into God's word more. But first, before we really get into this, let's kind of understand a little bit about what's going on here. So let's understand the Pharisees and the Sadducees and who they were. So they had some similarities. They had some things they actually kind of, sort of, maybe a little bit agreed upon. So they were both Jewish. I mean, both were of the Jewish sect. Both honored Moses and the law. So they recognized Moses and the law. Both had a measure of political power. Yeah, here we go. Now we're talking. So they both had some influence in their communities. And we all know what happens when your influence in communities has been uh, uh, threatened a little bit. We know what happens. But think about it. These two did not really hang out together. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, it's, it's not like they went around preaching together or talking together. They, I mean, they lived separate lives. They believed separate things. They did different stuff. Now, some of their differences, the Sadducees were more religious and conservative when it came to interpreting the scriptures. They were more literal with their interpretation. Um, basically, if it wasn't written down in the word, it didn't exist. It wasn't real. Now, your Pharisees, they gave equal authority to oral tradition as well as written tradition. So they were a little more, more liberal with it. You know, they, they would actually, the, the oral tradition and the written tradition, they both saw as, as equal. Now, the Sadducees, they kind of rejected a belief in an afterlife. Basically, they believed once you were dead, you were dead, that was it, it was gone. You lived your life, there was no spirit, there was no condemnation, nothing, you just died, done, out, that's it. Now, your Pharisees, they did not, reject this. They did believe that there was an afterlife uh, after death that you would either be rewarded or punished based on your works. So the Sadducees rejected an unseen spiritual world. They didn't believe in heaven or hell. And the Pharisees, they did. They believed in a spiritual realm. So these are some major differences, major arguments they had with each other. So they didn't see eye to eye. They just it, it didn't happen. Now, the, the Sadducees, they were your elitists. These were the people with all the money. They kind of run the show. They, they, were the, they were the big guns. The Pharisees, the common working class folks, just the, the normal old guys digging ditches and whatever, they were the common working class folks. And they basically avoided each other and rarely, rarely ever agreed on anything together. But there's this one time they agreed. They agreed it was time to come together to do something about this Jesus guy. So here they came together, they agreed on something. So 
we go back to verse 1, and we're talking about they wanted to see a, a Jesus to perform a sign from heaven. Well, that's a sign in itself, the fact that the two of these groups actually came together for a common purpose, and they totally missed it. They totally missed that. It was because they perceived Jesus as a threat. He was a threat to their control. He was a threat to their lifestyle. He was a threat to their power both politically and spiritually. And that is one thing that they could come together and agree on. We got to get this Jesus guy. He, he is, he, he's a threat to us. So that was a sign in itself, these two groups coming together. Even something as evil as what the, fa the Sadducees and the Pharisees were doing, Jesus brought two opposing groups together for a purpose, a godly purpose, which we'll see, a godly purpose where God can only use such evil for good. This just reminds us that God is sovereign over all and everything. So let's now go to our scripture. That's just the Sadducees and the Pharisees. You see how rich this, this is? Just the mentioning of their names is, is rich. Let's read Matthew 16.1 again. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to test him, and they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. Well, they've already seen a sign. They see these two opposing groups coming together to get him. That was a sign. They totally missed it. The, the, the disciples missed it as well. So they are asking for signs. Even after Jesus has already performed many, he's healed the lame. He's made the, the blind see. He's turned water into wine. The list goes on. He has performed so many, but yet they want more. They're basically asking for his credentials. They want to see Jesus' credentials. You prove to us who you, who you say you are when it's already been there. And the Sadducees and the Pharisees did not even realize that the very scripture... The very word that they held so dear, they held so close, they stuck so close to, was his credentials. This is all about Jesus from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. Every letter, every word, every space between every word is about Jesus. And in Matthew 16, 2 and 3, he answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. So we've all heard it, the sailor's thing. You know, red sky at morn, sailor take morn. Red sky at night? No, other way around. Yeah, red sky at morn, sailor's delight. Red sky at night, sailor take flight. <laughs> I'm taking flight up here. But you, you get the point. You didn't realize that was in Scripture. I, I mean, most people don't. But what he's really saying is he's telling, look, all right, you guys can go out and look at the sky and tell what the weather's going to be like today. And you can go out and see what it's like, going to be like. But I'm standing right here in front of you. And you don't recognize me. You don't recognize who I am. You don't recognize that the Christ is standing directly before you. So you have the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the scholars of God's word that is full of prophecies of Messiah, but yet they're missing it. Totally missing it. You look at Numbers, you look at Psalms, you look at Isaiah, you look at Genesis, you look at Samuel, you look at Acts, you look at Rome, all of it. Jesus points to Jesus, all of it. They literally could not see the forest for the trees. Who's ever heard that? You can't see the forest for the trees. My dad said that to me once. He was like, yeah, yeah, boy, you can't see the forest for the trees. And I'm thinking to myself, what? 
scripture right there. <laughs> and I didn't get it. And they don't get it. The, the trees were in the way of Jesus. They're, they were in the way of Jesus. They could not see him. I'm telling you, don't be like the Sadducees and Pharisees. Don't miss the forest for the trees. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. Remember that, please. Stop resisting. Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, and that is the man Christ Jesus. We talked about that a little bit this morning when we were studying Job. So we're in Job chapter 23. Old Job's like, yeah, if you get me an audience before God, I got this. I can tell him that I'm a righteous man, and I can prove to him without a doubt that I don't deserve all that I'm going through. Well, I'm sorry about that, buddy, but 1 Timothy 2.5 tells us something different. If we're in the presence of God, guess where we're going to be? Flat on our faces worshiping him. We, were, we are not going to be standing upright thinking we're going to tell him who we are and what we've done. There's only one man that can do that, and that's Jesus. He is our mediator. He stands before God before us. We don't need a priest. We don't need anybody else. All we need is Jesus. He does that work for us. He stands before a holy God and says, this is one of mine. He does, like Kevin and I talked this morning, he doesn't even have to plead. He just says, this is one of mine. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. My prayer is that everybody in this room will be one of his. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Amen. A quote by Stephen Lawson, Anytime, anywhere, anyone has ever been saved, it has been by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. No other way. Nothing, nothing you do has anything to do with your salvation. If you think it does, elders will be glad to meet with you at the back after service today. And we can talk about that, but it does not. Matthew 16, 4. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. Jesus was, all right, you're going to get the sign of Jonah. I got to go. He, he's like, he wasn't going to waste his time with the Pharisees and the Sadducees anymore. Jesus is calling them basically a faithless, hard-hearted generation that is demanding God to perform form a, a magic trick basically for them just for them when they have already been given the greatest sign of all and that's the sign of Jonah you might be asking okay what does Jonah have to do with this and you remember Jonah spent three days in the great fish Jesus is telling them about his own death and resurrection here that Christ will be in the earth for three days and rise again. That will be the greatest, and it continues to be the greatest miracle of all because he conquered death once and for all for us. And in Matthew 16, I'm going to finish the verses out, 5 through 12. When the disciples reached the other side, They'd forgotten to bring any bread. Okay, they're like me. Y'all are probably hungry for lunch. They're thinking about something to eat. They need some bread. I'm hungry too. Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, we brought no bread. But Jesus, being aware of this, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you had gathered? 
Not only five loaves for five thousands, but they had leftovers. Maybe that's where boxing up leftovers and taking them home came from. I don't know, but they had leftovers. See, Pastor Mike's a bad influence on me when I say stuff like that. Now we got seven loaves for 4,000, and guess what? There were, there were leftovers again. How is this that you fail to understand that I do not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Poor disciples, only thinking with their stomachs, totally missed it at this point. Jesus is only thinking about their holiness. They're only thinking about their stomachs. Jesus is warning them of the sin of false teaching of the Pharisees here. He's warning them of this false teaching. I think this comment from Jesus must have possibly confused them a little bit because they began to talk. But Jesus, being aware of this, basically addressed their conversation and confronts them about it. So, again, they're still thinking with their stomachs. They're still thinking about bread. So the disciples were doing exactly what Jesus warned them about. They got caught up in something off to the side. False teaching. They were not listening to what Jesus is saying. Jesus is telling them, do not get caught up in leaven. The leaven is a sin. That's what we're talking about here, sin. Because in Galatians 5, 9, it tells us that a little leaven spoils the whole lump. It only takes a little bit to spoil it, just a little pinch. And the way the disciples got all sidetracked with their stomachs, that was a little pinch that, they, that could have really leavened the whole lump. And Jesus reminds them of the miracle of the five loaves and the seven loaves. Then he reminds them of who he is. And in John 6.35, Jesus tells us here, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus is the bread of life. They didn't need that real piece of bread. They had the real piece of bread right there in their midst, and that was Jesus. He is the bread of life. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is breathed out, of, out by God and profitable for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. God's word is like bread. Eat it. Fill up on it. Put it in your body. This is not leavened. This is unleavened, perfect bread as Jesus is the bread of life. We should eat of it daily. And I pray some may feast, some may snack. Just start somewhere. Have some. Believe this. Fill up on his word and believe what Jesus tells us. And John 1.14 tells us the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And John 14.6, everybody here should know this verse. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. No other way. Nothing you do, nothing you say. It's only one way, through Jesus. Only Jesus. Jesus is the only way. And my prayer today for each and every person here is that you just fill yourself on God's word. Fill yourself with this bread. Trust in Jesus. Allow him to work in your heart. I pray that it, there's at least one person in here that God is drawing to them now. 
That is my prayer. That is my prayer. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your, for your son who just bore it all for us on the cross, who conquered death once and for all, who is our mediator, who stands there in our place, who took on all sin and bore it for us. Father, I thank you for this time together to put aside to just worship and love you. Father, I ask and pray that you'll continue to be with our service. And I pray there are hearts that are being drawn. I pray there are lives that are being changed that can only be done by you. We thank you and we love you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Solid rock. It's in your Bible. I mean, it, it's in, it is in your Bible. Amen. Uh, it is 511 if you want to do, uh, if you want the hymn book. All right. We're doing this. We're doing this old school. Ready? All right. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. sounds good today amen you know a choir up here is a modern invention right God's word is for God's people to sing and you're going to be doing a lot more of that so if you need song singing lessons or something uh, go work on it 
But listen, if you can't sing, if you don't think you sound good, that means you need to tell everyone around you to sing louder. And then they won't hear you. But we are going to see even more uh, of you guys singing with, uh, with us. So encourage you in that to, um, and come back tonight. Uh, we're going to sing some, and we're going to pray some, and we're going to hear some great things God's doing. Uh, Colossians 3. Uh, starting in verse 15, says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Would you just pray with me? Father, we thank you for a good morning, God. We thank you for Pastor Bill and the, just your word, Father, that we know does not return void, Father, that we pray that, God, uh, the message this morning will be one that we will continue to meditate and think on and that your word, which, God, you declare so richly dwells within us, Father, will we'll take heart and God, that we will uh, not play a church like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but God, that we will uh, commit ourselves fully to you, because God, you and you alone are worthy. So Father, we take this time and thank you. I uh, pray that we would bring you all glory and honor as we head out uh, these doors, Father, into the places we live, work, and play to be a gospel witness, to be the light in the darkness. Father, we thank you for all you do. In Christ's name, amen. I'm just going to ask you to take a moment or two before you rush off. We're going to be doing this every service, so we've got to train people, like, right? It's like Pavlov's dog here, right? So what we want you to do at the end of every service, before you rush off, we want you to take a few moments, just quietly, just reflect in your heart, just what was that, uh, hopefully God spoke to you this morning. So we're doing this every week. It's in your bulletin there, so you can see it in the bottom too. So take a few minutes. If you hear somebody moving, it should just be the elders moving to be in the back so that you can go to them and have time if you want to pray, if you want to talk to them about something going on. Uh, so uh, they will be moving to the back, so we don't want to be hypocritical. We're telling you not to move, and then we're moving, but we're be scattered around the back. These are things you're going to start seeing every week, so we're available for you to come to us. But just take a few moments just to kind of really reflect before you rush out the door and already forget everything that, that hopefully God has spoken to you this morning and get busy with what's going on in the world. Let's focus on what God's speaking to us right now personally, not to the person with you, to you. What is God saying to you right now? So you just take a few moments and then uh, we'll dismiss you from there.